we were waiting to conceive and it, it wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. We were just, we were literally waiting on God. It was the most painful, brutal journey of my entire existence. My doctor was like, Pell, let us just take a break. Let us just take a break. Sure. Let your body heal. When the doctor said we need to take a break, I was like, I'm not taking a break. There has to be a way that I am going to be a mother. People underestimate um, the costs that come with trying to fall pregnant. There are things that my daughter and my grandkids will not have to go through simply because I am going come through on. them hey, now. I am conquering them yes. now. I am trusting God for them now mm -hmm. and I am canceling them now. Yes. So my daughter and her kids and my daughter's generation that is coming come after on. us, they do not have to go through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I am intentional about this ministry. Mm. Hello there, Sant fam. Welcome back to Saint Twins TV. This is your favorite podcast. <laughs> I've been through the most podcasts. You had to say of that. Of us. <laughs> I have to say that because it is because of you that we have officially reached 300k Ooh. subscribers on YouTube, <laughs> which is something that we've been building up. Yes. Um, and it's all thanks to each and every single one of you who continue to watch. And on that note, make sure that you do follow us on our different social media platforms. Yes, we are on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. And all our promos are posted there. So please go ahead and follow, like, and of course, subscribe right here on YouTube. Because this is a podcast. We are definitely on audio platforms. We're definitely on Spotify. Make sure you go ahead and follow us there and listen to the podcast. Week after week, every single Tuesday, we bring you another exciting episode of the podcast. And this morning, we have Pearl, who is here to share her story. Welcome, Welcome. to the show. Thank you. <laughs> you look gorgeous, Thank girl. You. Thank you. Like a I, queen. Had, I had to, knowing that I'm coming to see you. Wow. Yes, I had to. <laughs> no pressure. pressure. It's the gold. Lala, it's the jewelry. Lala, it's listen. this. I'm Listen. here for it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Pearl, thank you for being here. Can you just briefly introduce yourself to our Saint fam? So my name is Pearl Holstock, but on social I am Umgam Lungu Om Shopekwa. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> and we must just take that as a direct translation. Yes. Literally. Yes. <laughs> Literally. Yes. Wow. Okay. And give us a background of, of where you grow up, your upbringing, you know? So Upeli is from Guazulu Natal. I grew up in a, a location called Mbomalanga Township. I am a girl from Ekasi, and I had a beautiful, colorful, um, animated head, a, a childhood. I was raised by my mother and my stepfather, who was my best friend. My stepfather literally shaped the woman that I am today. He taught mm. me every single thing I know, how to be a woman, how to be a proper woman. Um, I accepted Christ when I was 12 years old and I've been living this beautiful life knowing that I am saved and he's my dad from that time up until today. I oh. am one of six siblings. I have lost most of my siblings. I'm only left with my brother. Sure. Oh, yes. so and I'm also to blessed that. to be left with my late siblings' kids. So I am now a mama of oh. 16 Huh? Nieces and nephews, yes. And I'm also a grandmama and I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Through one of my niece. I'm yeah. also a grandmama of two. Yeah. Sure. Yo. Yeah. So how many siblings were you? Six. Six. And yes. then now you are? Two. Wow. Yeah. That must be a lot because you're quite young. It, it is a lot. Mm. Emotionally, it is a lot. I am just taking it every day. Because it's hard, particularly mm. my sister. I lost my sister, who was my best friend. Mm. I that that hit me hard. It mm. hit me more than when I lost my mother. When when I Yo. lost my sister, it was. And every single thing that I've been through in life, I had her. So mm. knowing now the person that I was with is no longer here. Mm. Yeah, it was hard, but every day, every day. Yeah, it's a journey. It's, it's a, a journey. It's a journey. I think especially the journey of loss. Um, it's one that people really underestimate, but mm -hmm. it's, oh my goodness, it's, it's one chapter yes. that never comes to an end. You just learn to live with, with it, it. Yes. but it never really gets easy, yes. you know. Yes. So let's get into why you hear the gist of your story. So as I've mentioned on social, I am Umgam Lungu. So how Umgam Lungu came about, um, little background story. 
my husband and I got married instantly when we got married we wanted to have this beautiful mixed race kids <laughs> yes <laughs> we just wanted those kids we wanted gorgeous tribe <laughs> running after us but unfortunately for us uh, we had to wait we had to wait the first year of marriage we were like okay next year second year third year fourth year fifth year sixth seventh sure. eventually we 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 waited for nine years wait and you tried we tried from the first year from the first year up until we we received our children oh okay now i get it now so mm -hmm. when you say we waited you 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 mean like you you were trying and you were waiting to conceive and it it wasn't happening it wasn't happening we were just we were literally waiting on god but how it it happened is I am one of those people, I'm very self-aware, I'm very, very driven. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to get pregnant just like that. Because I'm used to doing things and things just happen. Just happen. Mm. And this time around, God was like, no, it's not going to happen in the way that you want it to happen. You're going to have mm. to walk this journey with me. It was the most painful, brutal journey of my entire existence. We had multiple losses. We went through... It financially, when you're dealing with infertility, mm. financially, it mm. drains you emotionally, physically. I went through a phase where I literally felt I was depressed. When you looked at me outside, because I have this big personality, we're mm. like, everything is good. She has everything under the control. She is all about, you know, doing her work. People assumed I was just way too driven to even think about kids. Mm. Meanwhile, behind closed doors, we were literally crying ourselves to sleep. We were, mm. we were going through doctors, we were going through injections, we were losing kids. We, it, behind the closed doors, that's when everything was happening. But when you saw me outside, I was well put together. My husband and I, we are this cute couple. There is something cute about mixed race couple. <laughs> you don't think There's that they go through. Not something cute, yes. everything yes. cute. <laughs> you actually don't assume that there is something wrong. Mm. And, and for us, what was wrong was we just couldn't this part of our lives that we both wanted so badly, we just had to wait. We had to wait. And it, it was a crushing and a pruning season for me because I, I literally had to be like, oh, okay, Lord, then when? In my mind, I thought it was going to happen instantly because I grew up in church. I was a good girl. You know, I was a good girl. I assumed because I was a good girl. I can literally just say to God, but God deliver. Mm. And it doesn't happen like that. Nothing in life happens because of your deeds, because of your goodness, mm. because of your behavior. And I had to learn that in this journey. I had to be like, oh, okay, Lord. There was pride there in me saying to mm. you, I'm expecting a child now simply because I was a child. I was your child. There was pride. There was arrogance. So he literally had to say, I'm going to wait for you to come at the end of yourself. When you're done with what you are doing, then I'm going to step in and I'm going to be a God that will provide a child mm. for you. And I, I, I literally had to go through a journey of changing the way I was praying. My prayers were very, very um, self-centered. I wanted a child for me and my husband. Mm. I didn't want a child for the glory of God, for the child to come here and for the manifestation of the glory yes. to come to fruition. I it was just about me and my husband mm -hmm. having this child. And God had to teach me how to pray correctly, how to literally remember what he has said concerning children, concerning mm. marriage, and mm. concerning our bodies. Uh, I went through um, a phase where I was attending f fertility specialist and at some point my doctor was like, Pell, let us just take a break. Let us just take a break. Let your body heal. You, we cannot be doing this every month. Let's mm. just allow yeah. your body to heal. And the stubbornness in me was like, no, there has to be a way. There is no way I'm taking a break. I'm not. And mm. you know, with, with us, we're always thinking of, I'm, I'm getting older. I'm mm. getting older. So when the doctor said we need to take a break, I was like, I'm not taking a break. There has to be a way that I am going to be a mother. I, I, Lord, just show me a way. And I was extremely busy with work. I, at that particular time, I was working a lot. I was working a lot trying to numb the void and the pain mm -hmm. yeah. of not having a child. So you will give me a course. I'm like, I'm registering for that course. There is a workshop there. I'm there. You know, I was doing so many mm. things. And the Lord was like, I just want you to take a step back. I want to have an encounter with you. I want you to understand who I've been in your life. Mm. And you cannot treat me like a prop. Feature me mm. where you want me to, to, mm. to be featured. Sure. I want to teach you how to be a child in order for you to receive a child. You can't receive him if you do not know how to receive. Being taught and being corrected. So I sat with God and I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to go to public college. I'm going to register because I want to hear what you want to say mm. in this season of my life. 
So I went to a public college. And the first thing that I was taught was how to discern the word of God, the voice of God, how to discern it correctly. And I was like, oh, Lord, I, I've been praying. I've been saying that I'm your child, but I didn't know that I was still carrying so much trauma from my childhood. So as I've mentioned, my childhood was colorful. And my sister and I, we went through so many traumatic experiences together. Yeah. Our bond was, was beautiful, but it was also toxic because we were bonded okay. by pain. We, mm. we, we, what was the, the age gap between you? Two years. Oh, okay. Yes, we were bonded sure. by pain and, and, and we just, every time when I think about losing her, I will just freak out. And every time she mm. thought about losing me, it, our, our mm. past, we were, we were close, but it was just not healthy because I will literally not be okay if I don't know if wherever she is, she is mm. eating. And this is a grown woman with kids, but that's how deep our relationship yes. was. And when I went to public college, the Lord was like, I want you to love me like that. I want you to love me the way you love your sister. I want you to be able to come to me like you come to her. I want you to be able to be vulnerable with, with me like you are with her. Mm. And I feel like I didn't even give my husband the same love that I gave my sister. My sister was like, Yo. literally me coming to Jobek, my sister will be the first person and I will be driving <laughs> to cases and we'll be talking about it <laughs> until I arrive. I'm like, okay, now I'm just laughing because I'm like, I'm just hey, is, is she talking about <laughs> us? Yeah, what's going on? No, but it's beautiful. It's sure. beautiful. But but now I can I can imagine mm. like losing your sister mm. yeah. when you describe the relationship that yeah. you had. Sure. Yeah. Wow. So public college taught me to just rely on God, mm. completely rely on Him, and understand that He is my source. In His time, I will have mm. a child. And in that year, it was 2017. In that year, I I felt in my heart that the Lord has given me a name for this child. And I we had mm. a name. My husband and I had this beautiful name. And we both said, this is his name. And we started, you know, when you've been waiting for something for so long, your friends start thinking, shame, she's losing it. You know, she wants mm. to have a child so bad, she's losing it. So we started decorating his, his room. And my friends were like, Pell, you can't do that. Wow, you and your husband? Yes. Like you had an entire nursery? We had this stubborn this is kind by of faith. faith. Yes, this stubborn kind of crazy faith. That's what they called it. They were like, you guys are crazy. We started buying books, toys. We bought everything. We had the room ready and every morning we'll literally stand in the room. We will call him by name and we'll say, Father, we thank you that he's coming. You you even decided it's a him. Yes, we knew it was like, a boy. It's, it's a boy. <laughs> we, wow. And his, his name is Hanan. Hanan means the God of grace. Mm. God is a God of compassion. Mm. So every time we said his name, we were reminding ourselves that we are serving a God of compassion. So he is going to give us a child. And we will pray and cry and declare in the morning and we'll leave, go to work and come back and do the same thing. Mm. I remember the day that we found out that we were pregnant. I said to my husband, we're pregnant. And because we normally do this every morning, he's like, yes, we are. He thinks we're still oh. <laughs> I'm like, we're pregnant. He's like, yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we are pregnant. He's like, yes, we are. I'm like, no. We are, we are, really around, we are pregnant. <laughs> this is not by faith. This, this is, is not real. By, this is real. And we both just started crying. Oh. We decided we're not going to work. We're just going to sit and just pray. And we prayed and we cried and we thank God and we're like, Lord, we know this is this And this is, is after how many years? This is after nine years wow. of marriage. Hmm. Wow. And our son came and two years later, our little girl came. Oh! <laughs> so social media, how did I come to be on social media? I actually didn't like social media. Oh, I was negative about it. I was like... People want to take pictures and they want us to compliment them. They're so vain, <laughs> so shallow. I, I wouldn't they like the comments. You're yes, like, I'm no, like, it's too much. Really? You want people to say you're beautiful? Don't you know that? <laughs> I was so negative about it. And my husband was like, why don't you just write a blog post about what we've been through, our journey, our health journey, our fail, faith journey towards infertility. And let's just help somebody out there. I was like, mm. I'm not sure. So we wrote this blog post. And then one of my friends was like, why don't you just put it on Instagram as well? I was like, people are not interested. And my son was like, just, just try. If they are not interested, it's fine, but you did it. Yeah. So we wrote this one a, a post and people responded to it. We were like, oh, shocking. And then a brand, a, a well-known brand reached out and like, can we give you something for you guys to review for us? We, we love how you tell stories. We are reading your blog. I was like, I'm going to get paid for sharing <laughs> this. So it was like, okay, you can actually get paid yeah. doing this. <laughs> so social media is not bad after all. So we started sharing our journey on Instagram and, and people responded to us positively until one year ago, my husband said, let's just do one TikTok video. Funny. Let, let 
people see another side to you. Yes. Because my husband really thinks I'm funny. So he was like, <laughs> just do something on TikTok. And I was like, oh, I don't want to be so twerking. Cute. I don't want to yeah. be twerking on TikTok. He's like, you don't have to twerk. It's speak Zulu because my Zulu is so deep. I don't speak Zulu like other Zulu people. I speak like the rural Zulu. Oh. Like I speak words that people like. How they do you know that use, my yeah, yeah my okay. grandmothers used to speak like that? So my husband was like, just bring your personality, speak Zulu. Aww. And we did this video and it went viral. And people were like describing me. They were like the lady that is married to a white man. Then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna refer to myself as Umgam mm. So that is yes. how it started. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Then we started doing these TikTok videos, funny TikTok videos. Until one day, one of the ladies that is following me, she said, but you on Instagram is so different. You are so grounded, you're so rooted, you talk about Christ. And TikTok, we don't see that. Then I said to her, Instagram is a platform that I started when I was going through infertility. Mm. TikTok is for fun. It's different. So yeah. I posted that on TikTok and people were like, you guys went through infertility, can you share more? Mm. So I did a video sharing them about my infertility journey. And the next morning, I literally had 2,000 ladies and men sharing their infertility journeys. Mm. And some of them were suicidal. Some of them are dealing with depression. And I was like, oh, Lord, this is something that I need to do. This is something that I need to address. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm on social media is because we wanted to share about you. Yes, I deviated. And Lord, you allowed me. You're like, okay, have your way. It's yes, part thing. of the process. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually come back and share what I wanted to share. So I started sharing more about infertility. And I was like, I, I can only share my testimony with these people. I can't give them advice. What do I do? Then at the beginning of the year, I felt like I want to go back to school and do clinical psychology. So that's what I'm studying right now because okay. I want to be able to help them that's amazing. from a meaningful way. Uh, so I host infertility event in Joburg, in KZ10 and in Cape Town, mm. where we, we literally sit down, we are real, we are raw, we are sharing what we are going through. Mm. There is a big stigma associated with infertility. Mm. In our society, we do not talk about it. Mm -hmm. We do not talk about it. Hence, I want to be an advocate for men and women dealing with infertility because why are we not talking about it? Yeah. Why, when I am pregnant and I do not want this child, I can go and terminate it for free. But sure. there is nothing for someone who wants to who get wants pregnant to. for free. Mm, sure. So that is why I said there has to be something that's, that needs to be done. I'm going to be the voice for these people. I'm going to give them the support that they need. But more than anything, people that are dealing with infertility, they do not have money. I'm talking about people mm. with my skin color. They do not have money for fertility treatment. Mm. Mm. I it's cannot. Too expensive. Yeah. It's too expensive. I actually wanted us to get into that. I don't. I think people underestimate um, the costs that come with trying to fall pregnant. I think just being pregnant on its own yes. and going to a gynecologist, you complain. You're like, how is a consultation 2,000 rand? Yes. Imagine trying to fall pregnant how much it is. Your IVFs, these are hundreds and thousands. They do not know what it feels like mm. to literally want to be a mother so bad that you know what you're willing to do anything. So mm. with me, my, 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 my whole thing was I, was I had a lot of cysts. I was dealing with cysts. I was dealing with fibroids and my womb will just not... Hold. The moment I conceive, my womb will release. So that mm. was my challenge. So there were so many issues with me, not just physically, but also emotionally and spiritual. As I've, I've mentioned, I'm one of those people, if I want to get something done, I get it done. Mm. So this particular time, I can't. I was like, You're not in control. I'm not in control. I was like, I want to do something. I want to. And my personality was like, let's do something. And I just couldn't. Until I reach a point where I was like, Lord, you, we're going to do this your way. I don't know how this child is going to come to be because the doctor has already told me without medical intervention, I cannot be a mother. Mm. We're just going to do it together. And uh, my pastor then suggested, why don't you just go to a homeopath, someone that can help your body repair and heal itself. So we had to look now for a homeopath that is aligned to our values as Christians, mm. a, 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 a aligned to, to who we are as a family. So we, we found a lady that is a believer and we started, we changed my diet completely. We started eating according to my blood type. Mm. So changing my diet, changing my mindset, because I really do believe that our mindset plays a very important role in determining mm -hmm. if you will get anything in life. Yes. Mm. So changing that, changing the environment, changing the friends that I, I had at that time. Because I used to have friends when I'm like, one day I will be a mother. They're like, yes, 
you know, we get it. You know, we receive it with you. We're standing with you in, in, mm-hmm. in the gap and we're praying for, for you. And then you have friends when you like, then like, they're like, no, but Pell, why don't you just adopt? So there's, it's mm-hmm. coming from a good place, yeah. but it's not the will of God for you. Because God will give me the desire to adopt. God gives us the desires, but mm-hmm. God had never given me a, a desire to. But he gave me a, a desire to, to want to be a, a parent. Mm. So you knew. I knew. Mm. I just, yeah. So God gave me the desire to, to, to be pregnant, not for me to, to adopt. Mm. So I literally was like, I hear you. I love you, but I'm going to love you from there now. Because mm. I want to be with people that understand my hunger. Mm. Yeah. I want to do this. I want people to be able to see that God is a God of miracles. He can yeah. do this. And, and changing my mindset, praying intentionally, trusting God and relying on God and actually stopping and just, Lord, I just want to rest because I was so busy. Stopping and saying, okay, Lord, when you want me to sleep for two hours during the day, I'm going to do it. But it's hard for my flesh because I'm used to working, but mm. I'm going to do it because that's what you want. And then we conceived naturally without any medical contact. Wow. And we conceived naturally. My pregnancy was difficult, but I enjoyed every minute of it. Really? I am oh. sure. You look so cute, girl. <laughs> and the first time holding a baby. Oh no, when I, when I, you don't understand when I went to the labor to, to deliver my son. I started, yeah. I, I had someone to do my makeup. No. And the nurses, the nurses were like, what are you doing? What do you think this is? You are here to push. We are not in pain. I was like, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take pictures. I've waited for this for so long. Oh. Wow. I'm going to take beautiful pictures. So I, I, I did my makeup. I had my red lippy. I yes, was, I was girl. ready. And unfortunately, we had to go through the cesarean section. Okay. Yeah. But I wanted to look gorgeous because I wanted to remember that. And my husband was like, let her be. Oh, she yes. waited for me. I'm like, you don't need earrings. I'm like, I want them. I want, I want it all. <laughs> and when I saw my son, he looked so familiar. He looked like wow. someone that I've seen before. Sure. I think because I had waited for him for so long. Yo. He just looked so familiar. And he, his name, Hanan, just... You know, it suits him so perfectly. Sure. And and he's just, he's our treasure. He's our, I call him Dr. H, simply because I believe God used him to heal us, to heal oh. my marriage, to heal me emotionally and physically. Sure. And mm. then my little girl came. Her name is Shekana Glory. And yeah. she is, she is the light, literally the Shekana Glory. She is the yeah. light mm. of our house. She is talkative she is she has this big personality she's i don't mommy. know where she she's gets you from <laughs> i wonder you know, <laughs> but yeah, she's 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 just she's she's the light she's the light and we're all protective of her even big brother is protective of her yeah. sure wow. Sissy, i'm like wow um i think that's so beautiful and i i love that you never gave up yes. with what you wanted i think we often we often say to people, don't give up, don't give up. But then we give them plan B and plan C and plan D, you know? So it's like we are contradicting what we're saying to them. Um, Mm -hmm. And I love that you were steadfast in your faith and you believed and you had a partner who also believed with you. And, you know, when you spoke about the nursery room, um, faith makes you crazy. It does. Literally. It does. And I think this for me is a beautiful reminder, especially for us as believers, to mm-hmm. say it's okay to mm-hmm. take a leap of faith. faith. Yes. Yes. It's okay for you to have crazy faith. faith. Yes. It's okay for you to do something that is unwarranted or doesn't make sense. Yes. It's okay yeah. if yeah. it feels right in your heart yes. and you know that that's what you want. Stick to that yes. because you're right. The Bible does say God will give us the desires of our, our hearts. hearts. Yes. So each and every one of us have what we desire. Yes. And God wants to grant us what we desire mm-hmm. in our hearts. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for creating a platform to heal others and yes. to give them courage mm-hmm. and strength for them to believe again, for them to trust again and to really just know that it's not the end. Yes. After nine years yes. to have mm. two beautiful children, mm. after going through it all, yes. you know, yeah. and having losses in between. But you know what? At the end, it all worked out for your good. Yes. Yeah. It yes. really did. And it's always so, so beautiful to see how in our struggles, we always find our purpose within yes. that. And then it never just becomes about us, us. but it also affects other people in a positive mm-hmm. light. And I think that's what happened to you. Yes. Um, I mean, imagine waking up to 2,000 messages yes. from people who are in a similar situation, situation and they're yeah. able to relate because of your story. Mm-hmm. And that's why this show is so important because sharing your struggles um, is a testimony to someone because yes. then they're like, oh, actually, 
I don't have to take my own life. Yes. I'm not the only the one. one. Yes. You know, if Pearl can go through it yes. and she's looking so fabulous today and has her family, I can do that. Yes. And with that said, I think it's also important to say there's, there's nothing wrong with adoption. Yes. There's nothing wrong with, you know, all these other options that are there. We love those options. Yes. Great for them, but also how you explain it also, it was not part of your desire to yes. God. And mm. God was like, I know your desire. Yeah. You waited for your desire and it happened. It, it and did. we love it for you. Thank you. I love what you just said about change. your pain becomes your ministry. Mm -hmm. I did not know that I will be doing what I'm doing. I did not know that I will literally be leaving cases and to, to go and help men and women that are dealing with infertility. Mm. Like when I was going through that, I felt so alone and people didn't know that's what we were going through. As I've shared, people saw us from the outside, everything was good. They mm. did not know. When I was going through what my husband and I were going through, we didn't know that we will we will actually sit with people and people will share, you know, share intimate details mm. of their lives. And and they will break down and they will cry. And we'll be like, Lord, thank you for allowing us to go through that. Because now it makes sense. Yes. It has nothing to do with us. It yes. has nothing to do with us having our victory. It, mm. it it now it's a ministry. I we call it conquering infertility because the moment someone has a sickness and they like I have a headache. No, you do not. You are battling with headache. Mm. You are battling with infertility. It's mm. something that is outside. It's your opponent. Mm. You are battling sure. with it, and eventually you will be victorious. So we oh, we, yes. we, we always say Love we it. conquered infertility. We did not. We were not healed from infertility because when God created me, He did not create me with infertility. He did not. He created me completely healthy, completely whole. The enemy is the one that comes with sicknesses. We know mm. that. But God is able to use even that, even yes. that painful past. And he's Yo. able to touch and reach other people. Two weeks ago, I had an event uh, in KZN where we were talking about infertility. It was so deep. It was. At some point, I just, I just stopped. And I was like, Lord, mm. this is it. Mm. This is... Where are you sending me? Mm. This is what you're trusting me with? Mm. You know, I stopped and I was like, this is, this is big. Mm. The fact that there's someone who can come with their pain, mm. thinking I can speak life into it, this is, this is big. This is for the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. This is nothing that I can take for granted. Mm. Hence, when I do these events, I always say, Lord, lead. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is not something I can just do with my own strength. Mm. This is you. Yes. This is you. And how I portray you in this moment, how mm. I portray the kingdom in this moment, is everything. It's everything. Yeah. How I even portray my spiritual home, my spiritual parents, mm. how I portray my husband in this moment is everything. Yeah. Wow. Because we do not live life for ourselves. Mm -hmm. There are people attached to us, connected to us, there are things that my daughter and my grandkids will not have to go through simply because I am going Come through on. them Yay. now. I am conquering them yes. now. I am trusting God for them now mm -hmm. and I am canceling them now. Yes. So my daughter and her kids and my daughter's generation that is coming Come after on. us, they do not have to go through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I am intentional about this ministry. Mm. Hence, I reach out to women of God. Yes. Because I didn't just want to share on any platform mm. because this is this is too deep this is too personal it is. this is too precious this mm. is not for us this is for god mm. wow i'm sorry for wow crying. ending wow you know just generational delays and saying from now on it's going to be generational blessings, blessings. and it's a huge responsibility because it's covenants wow. that you're breaking. It's things that have been said that you're breaking. It's so many things that you don't wow. even know mm -hmm. that you are breaking. But yeah. you're saying, God, I'll rather carry that cross. Yes. From now on, from here going sure. forward, yeah. we are a blessed generation. <gasps> oh, so God bless beautiful. you. <laughs> and I really hope this episode is going to be enlightening also to, you know, those family members, those those parents, those sisters and brothers who, who also pressure. sometimes put pressure on you know, people, when are you having a baby? Mm. You know, those insensitive questions. Mm. You know, those times, like, even when somebody gained a bit of weight, are you pregnant? pregnant you know, yeah. when you don't know what somebody's going through. So I think this is also a learning um, 
experience experience you know for us to be a little bit more sensitive especially to couples you can't be like it's been a year since you married it's been two years we're not having a baby i think we need to stop that mm -hmm. yeah we really really it's need time. to stop that it's time that we stop that let's educate ourselves let's be loving let's be caring let's be sensitive towards each other Thank you so much, Send Fam, for watching this exciting and touching episode of I Have Been Through the Most. Thank you, Pearl, for sharing your story. Love and you. thank you for <laughs> commenting down below to let us know where you are watching from. Listen, like our comment section <laughs> is buzzing. I cannot believe, Sissy, yeah. the international viewership that we have. Right? Please do continue to comment love from it. where you're watching from. We love it, love it, love it. Until next time, from myself, Innocent. And myself, Millicent. And our lovely guest pearl and of course the team behind the camera <laughs> it's, it's bye bye, bye.